Hello, my name is Ludovic Le Forestier. I'm the co-founder and a board member at the IIAR, the Institute for Industry and Relations. Today, I'm going to discuss um, 10 truths for analysts and influencer relations for B2B and with a special focus on startup, but also scale-ups. So onwards and upwards. Um, Firstly, the analysts are uh, really the top influencers um, in terms of B2B. Um, it's useful to give a definition of industry analyst. The um, IEL provides one here, an information and communication technology industry analyst, bit of a mouthful, but essentially is a person working individually or within a firm um, whose business model incorporates creating and publishing research about um, and advising on how, why, and where information and communication technology related product services, vendors can be procured, deployed, and used. So what does that mean? In short, the industry analysts spend their time being briefed by all vendors in their space. They speak and advise not only vendors, uh, but they also um, discuss with a lot of clients, analyze and size the market. This means forecasts and market shares. They evaluate products. They do stack rankings and different other more complicated rankings. They evaluate products. They write research. They speak at their own events. Um, or at industry trade shows. So they have multiple skills, writing, presenting, analyzing, but also advising buyers of technology and clients. Um, you have a few logos there depicting who those analysts are. Uh, the uh, 500 pound gorilla um, is the uh, $4 billion company Gartner. Um, Next to it, you have IDC with over 1,000 analysts, Omdia based here in the UK, but also Forrester. And, and here are a few names of other firms that I like a lot. CCS Insight focusing a lot on mobile 451 research now purchased by Student Poor's, but focusing on data center and Constellation um, focusing on customer experience a lot and digital transformation. One thing is for sure that all the B2B surveys I've seen, all of them um, point in the same direction. Analysts are always the top or within the top three influencers in the buying process. It's at all stages of the funnel, from awareness to consideration uh, to post-purchase. So it's every single type of the, the purchase funnel. And they're all the way up there, either the first one or in the top three together with peers. So buyers um, tend to trust other people in the same function. Uh, often above um, um, other types of influencers, such as peer review sites, but they're always, always way above media, way above consultants, way above salespeople and vendors' employees. So in a nutshell, when an analyst speak, the C-suite listens. Growth. Um, isn't the only outcome. So when you come to think about why you should do and engage analyst relations and do influencer relations, in my mind, you have four items, four outcomes that you should be looking at. Firstly, and in, in fourth place, you have sales. As we've discussed, analysts are in, inserted in the sales process at all stages. Analyst relations can be way more efficient and cheaper than growth hacking, but there's a but, but it's a long game. So you need to build those relationships and we'll come back to this. 
So your clients will put you in a long list if you're covered in, uh, covered in industry analyst research, will select you for the short list based on evaluations such as the Forrester Wave or the Gartner Magic Quadrant or the IDC Marketscape. And they will choose you very often after consulting, speaking with an analyst themselves. Um, number three, um, it's perception or awareness. Industry analysts shape the market, create categories, and can accelerate greatly your visibility. Think about it in terms of credibility. They are the journalist's best friends. They will provide endorsement. But crucially, in addition to defining categories, they also size opportunities and advise investors. Now, this is really, really crucial in terms of your own next round of funding. Uh, the investors want to know how large the opportunity you are addressing and they want independent sources. And guess what? McKinsey is not going to cut it. Number two um, is marketing. Analyst research is second to known when it comes to lending credibility to your good market tactics. Um, independent research can be turned into webinars, leverage for events. And in, in today's content rich world, or I would say in today's avalanche of content, you do need some authority to cut through all that content. And that authority is often never coming, uh, never best coming from, from analysts. But the top outcome is insights. Analysts are both sounding boards to get input on your product roadmap, test your messages, and in general, keep your fingers on the pulse of the market. So in, in other words, what I often say is that they're an anti-Kool-Aid. They will spare you a really expensive, sometimes fatal mistakes if you listen to them. You don't have to listen to them. A lot of people I've seen in my career have not listened to our list and have regretted it after. They're not always right, but they're very good at picking up on weak signals. I'll uh, come back to that on slide number um, five, I think. Um, next slide. An objection I often get in terms of niche relations is, well, wait, we're too early. We haven't defined our product. We don't know our strategy and, and we don't have the time to engage with analysts. This is wrong. This is very wrong. Firstly, the analysts love to, de, to be the first ones to, to know about innovative solutions. And they understand that startups and scale up don't have all the answers, don't have old customer references, nor do they have a polished deck. That's okay because you're a breath of fresh air compared to established vendors, giving them a lot of marketing BS. Engaging analysts as early as MVP can work if you have an innovative solution that fits well with an analyst coverage area if you pitch it right. The payback can be huge. If they mention you sometimes being designated a cool vendor, for instance, by Gartner, it can be a real jackpot. So engage early. Don't forget to treat it as a two-way relationship. See that they can bring you real insights and that will ace your, you will ace in terms of potential exposure. Um, time, we discussed time very quickly. Um, the analyst will save you a ton of time and money. So firstly, in terms of engaging analysts, when it comes to uh, the price of a subscription, um, and I'll come back to that, they can save you a full-time employee um, cost. Think of it of analysts having thousands of customer conversations. Um, if you think their subscription and their knowledge is expensive, well, try ignorance. Um, AR isn't reserved, analyst relations isn't reserved to well-resourced enterprises. However, dedicated AR agencies and good independent AR professionals can help you navigate the influencer landscape and help you obtain a lot of insights from informal conversations. So they will save you a lot of time 
and money in terms of which technology to bet on, uh, make sure you read the room right, uh, make sure you don't end up on the wrong side of history. But also, and that's why I've put a, a network graph here, they're fantastic at connecting people. Think of it for your next hire or uh, your partner and so on. Next one, there's often a misconception that you should just pay Gartner and you'll be in the magic quadrant. And I've put Gartner here and Scrooge there. Um, the message is actually that you should not pay for play and there's no way that you'll pay your way into a Gartner magic quadrant. I've put those associations there on this slide because it's the one I get the most often. It is absolutely wrong. You can buy access somehow, but you should never forget that analysts rely on their reputation as the currency for doing business. And they, don't, they won't risk their reputation, period. So there are many, many side tales of marketeers commissioning research and hoping for the best, uh, buying a subscription. The reality is that those projects are complex. Experience is key to choose the right analyst, manage the engagement, and align expectations between all these stakeholders. So buy access by any means. It's not a guarantee of results, and you should never pay for play. The next one, talking about what you should actually buy, um, you should buy what you truly need. You should not enter in a commercial relationship with an analyst firm and hoping they'll position you. That will not work. So firstly, do an audit of your research contracts. Um, secondly, and, and look at what, sorry, look at what you truly use. Dish what you do not use. And with the selected relationship uh, that are remaining, make sure you build a true two-way partnership. And that word is overused, but you should always aim at that. It's really, really important. But then thirdly, once you have built that relationship, and again, it takes a lot of time, so you need to start early, um, you should spend probably as much energy promoting those great results. For instance, you can, as Temenos did, did do a webinar with Gartner. Uh, you can do surveys here as Crito has done with Forrester to prove um, that a new category is a killer category, or you can use market share information to prove your worth with investors and clients alike. Um, number seven, uh, that's often something um, I see, it, it's a common mistake, is to um, start engaging with analysts after journalists. So remember, start early, you shouldn't start after journalists. Um, and, and give it as a side hustle to an agency. Sometimes they will even do it for free to return the account. It's a huge mistake. Why? Not because media relation agencies are bad, but because they are geared towards a very different set of KPIs, timelines, and workflows. They work fast. They're great at spinning content. They're great at spinning messages and making sure that they are newsworthy. They are not geared toward patiently, and I'll come back to patience, patiently following up, logging the insights, feeding all those conversations into product. So that will fail. Um, next one. You also need specialist help to make sure that you find the right analysts and influencers uh, for you. Um, the, the, the rules engagement of engagement are very well codified for larger firms, but vary for other independent analysts and other influencers. So you do need to pick who you engage with. You need to pick the right coverage area. And again, it's all about the relationship. Are you actually helping the analyst or not? Again, a good AR pro will know that and guide you. 
Next, um, cut the fluff, prep it, own it. So the analysts are really a demanding audience. They have heard it all before. Um, and you need to really be able to go high and low, high in terms of strategy, positioning, um, competition, all the way down to the weeds, roadmap features, um, and all that. I don't forget, it's a two-way street, right? So you have to be open, you have to be passionate, you have to make sure that it's a conversation and it's hard. So again, make sure you have someone that can train your spokespersons um, and, and work on the content. Next, make sure that um, you, um, again, have endurance and tenacity. So it's always hard to be patient when you're in startup mode, um, but it's a long game as any proper precious human relationship. What's really, really important is to follow up, always be following up. So your AR team should always be following up. The research cycles tend to be yearly. And if an analyst has an evaluation that starts in March, maybe it won't be published before September, but it's really a long, patient, year-long work to get to a magic quadrant. Finally, as a wrap-up, analyst relations is really something, when done well, which is extremely effective, um, has a super high return on investment because it gives you an unfair advantage compared to the competition. I have tales, loads of tales of vendors who actually started way earlier with a more mature analyst relations approach and really went head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to analyst perception, which then in turn influences the whole perception of the whole market, including media, including customers, including investors. Um, so it's, I know it's, it's hard, but do it. Um, that way, um, leverage the intelligence, work on your growth and work on your exposure. Thank you.